guys, welcome back to another one. If you were new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the new 2021 Honda Civic hatchback, courtesy of Apple Honda in York, PA. They have a beautiful, gigantic building. But for more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. Wanted to check out the Civic hatchback here today because, of course, this is one of the best-selling compact cars of all time, that being the Civic, not necessarily a Civic hatchback, but the Civic itself. It's been around since 1973. I have actually owned four of them now at this point, with one of them going to 230,000 miles before I actually ended up trading it in. Still nothing wrong with it. So having said all that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so there will be several different trim levels for the 2021 Civic hatchback. First one being the LX, starting at $22,000 even, which by the way is a modest $250 increase over the 2020 model year. Sport, which is the trim level we have today, going for $23,100. EX for $24,500. And lastly, the Sport Touring for $28,400. And so with all that being said, I do believe Honda plans on bringing the EXL trim to the 2021 model year as well. However, it's just not out quite yet. It will be available more than likely at a later date. But regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the Civic hatchback is going to be the same. Powering this little beast is going to be a 1.5 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder, putting out 174 horsepower at 6,000 RPM or 180 horsepower if you go with the sport trim level that we have today then 162 pound feet of torque available from the power band of 1700 to 5500 rpm again 177 pound feet of torque if you were to go with the six speed manual of the sport trim level power is going to be sent to the front wheels through a six speed manual like i was saying or a cvt which is the one we have today and by the way the cvt does come with paddle shifters as well zero to 60 time comes in at approximately seven seconds flat red line is going to come in at 6600 rpm top speed 131 miles per hour with mpg numbers coming in at 29 city 37 highway for the six speed sport 29 city 35 highway for the cvt sport and for the lx and ex trim levels it actually jumps up quite substantially to 31 in the city 40 on the highway if you want a little better mpgs those might be the trim levels for you but so that before we test out the paddle shifters or the acceleration or anything like that i did want to mention there are a couple different drive modes for the Civic hatchback as well. One of them being a sport mode, which is simply where you just take the shifter and slide it all the way to the back. It does adjust the gauge setup a little bit, and it does also immediately downshift for you. So it is gonna hold the RPMs at a much higher level. And you can also use that as a manual shift mode as well. So I apparently have it in this simulated fifth gear. I put it that way because it's a CVT transmission, but it does kind of allow you to shift through the gears. And actually it kind of feels like an automatic when you do that. I gotta be honest, some of the CVTs that you play around with with paddle shifters, they aren't that great. But this one actually simulates an automatic transmission quite well. So I will say well done Honda there. But so then the other drive mode that Honda has put in this one is the econ button, the econ mode. And so when you press that, it is going to adjust the throttle response, the shift points, and also the climate control settings, meaning it's going to dial back the AC perhaps on a hot day to give you a little better MPGs there. And that's essentially what that econ button is for. I remember driving to work back in the day in my Civics using that econ button on the highway and getting like 50 miles per gallon, like 10 miles per gallon more than what it was estimated out just because I had that econ button selected. So it is quite substantial the difference that it makes when it is selected. I did want to mention that to you guys. But so now having mentioned that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and find a straightaway. I want to do a quick little acceleration test here. I'm going to push the shifter all the way to the back, giving me that sport mode. And let's see how quickly we can get this new 2021 Honda Civic hatchback here up to speed. All right, let's do it from a standstill actually in three, two, one, off we go. Little turbo lag. There it is. There it is. <laughs> All right. Yep. There we go. Definitely gets up to speed. Once you get a little higher in the RPMs, there's ever so slight turbo lag at the very beginning when it comes to that acceleration. But then once you get up there, it really starts going. So definitely no issues with merging onto the highway in the Civic hatchback. I will say that. But to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so you will find 11.1 inch ventilated front disc in the back, 10.2 inch solid rear disc. And something that Honda always does very, very well in their vehicles is the braking. Here's why. 60 to zero stopping distance on the Civic hatchback comes in at 111 feet, which quite honestly is brilliant. A lot of vehicles out there will come in at 120s, some even 130s. The Volkswagen Atlas does it in 139. 
nine feet, so 111 feet. It's absolutely amazing. And when it comes to braking feel, it definitely stops very quickly. No issues with the braking feel. There's no brake pedal delay or anything like that. So love the braking on the Civic hatchback. I will say that. Then touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you will find a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes, this is pretty much as expected. It's pretty much as you would expect a Civic to be, I guess you could say. This is a compact car. It's not the firmest ride I've ever felt. So again, that's that's a good thing, but it's definitely not the smoothest either. So it's pretty much as expected for this one. As far as the steering feel goes, that one is actually, it tends to lean a little bit on the heavier side, which I love in a car like the Civic hatchback, especially a sport trim level. A lot of times compact cars will give you that loosey goosey steering feel, but with the Civic hatchback, you do not have that. So it does kind of have that sportier nature to it because of that. So I love that. And touching on cabin noise, it actually is kind of quiet in here. I will say that there isn't a whole lot of exterior road noise coming into the cabin wind noise is quite subdued as well so overall cabin noise is kind of above average for a compact car I did want to mention that as well when it comes to visibility this is one where you might have to get used to it because of the hatchback design there is kind of this bar that goes across the middle when you're looking out that rear view mirror which is not going to be quite as nice as the sedan I guess the Civic sedan form but I'm sure it is something that you would get used to but that is probably the only hindrance when it comes to visibility with this thing and again I'm sure you would get used to it but the other thing with visibility rain sensing windshield wipers actually come on the sport touring trim level only so that is pretty cool it's kind of like automatic headlights whenever the civic detects any kind of mist or rainfall it's going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers so it's just one less thing you got to worry about better assisting with visibility once again but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this brand new 2021 honda civic hatchback all right, so here she is, you guys, the 2021 Honda Civic hatchback completely blacked out. It actually looks insane, completely all black in my opinion. It looks really good. But anyways, let's go ahead and start up front on this one here. And so to start, projector beam halogen headlights are going to come standard across the board here. Automatic feature is going to come with that, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there. LED daytime running lights also coming standard for all trims. Then if you were to go with the sport trim level and up, that is going to add fog lights down below. You guys can see that. LED automatic headlights is going to come with the sport touring trim level only that is the only exception to those projector headlights so you do get leds if you go with that trim then you will also get a full lip kit if you were to go with the sport touring trim level so that is going to differ amongst some of the other trim levels as well there but so then making our way to the side of this one black window surrounds coming standard across the board when it comes to those side mirrors they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors they will be heated for the ex and sport touring trims and they will also get led integrated turn signals if you were to go with that sport touring trim level then then take a look down at the wheel setup 16 inch alloy wheels coming with the lx 18 inch alloy wheels coming with the sport and sport touring and lastly 17 inch alloys if you were to go with the ex trim level so of course you guys are looking at the 18 inch alloys right now definitely a nice look to them i will say that they have the black accents with the silver so i'd like the black accents it goes very well with the black exterior that we do indeed have here today but now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of the civic hatchback up top there you will find a gloss black shark fin antenna just below that body colored rear roof line spoiler and yes every single trim level will get that you gotta love that led taillights and that c-shape will come standard across the board as well and of course you get some sport badging if you were to go with one of those sport trim levels just below it all perhaps my favorite part here you do have a very nice rear diffuser back there it looks really good back there i will say that and just in the center of it all this is going to differ amongst the trim levels there is a single exhaust outlet tucked away for the lx and the ex so Otherwise, if you were to go with one of those sport trim levels like we have now, you will find a center mounted exhaust with dual tips finished in chrome. And so that is what, of course, you are looking at right now. So I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. Thank you. 
And so now since we are around back of the Civic hatchback, when it comes to opening that rear hatch, there actually is a button on the key fob. It's probably the easiest way. It's also a button on the hatch itself. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 25.7 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space there, coming in at 46.2 cubic feet. There is, of course, also a rear cargo cover back there. It's always important with hatchbacks. Also some rear cargo lighting back there as well. But then making our way up to the rear legroom, that comes in at an even 36 inches. So for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. And one of the things I like about the rear legroom in the back of the Civic here is that the back of the front seats is not a hard plastic so you do have a little bit of give if you're a little taller of a person for your knees at least you could push in the back of those front seats a little bit if you did need a little more space so I do love that that is there because sometimes it's plastic and then you don't have that but anyways rear center armrest with cup holders is going to be available on the upper trim levels you will also get heated rear seats for the sport touring trim level only if you wanted to spoil the rear passengers a little bit back there but other than that it's a pretty basic setup back there you have a cloth leather combination for those rear seats but then making our way up to the front seats now manually adjustable cloth seating coming with the lx and the sport trim level eight-way power driver seat coming with the ex trim level and up you will find heated front seats for that ex trim level and up as well leather seating is going to come with the sport touring trim level power adjustable passenger seat again for that sport touring trim level overall the seats are pretty comfortable not the most comfortable seats in the world definitely wouldn't have mind a little power lumbar adjustment on the driver's seat here but but nonetheless the seats will do the trick then taking a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped for the sport trim level and up and the 10 two grips are actually kind of bolstered on the thicker side which I do tend to like because it gives you a little better feeling of being in control around the turns as opposed to thinner wimpier grips I guess you could say but now let's go ahead and make our way to this startup and let me start by showing you guys the key you do have your Honda logo on the one side when you flip it over lock unlock that button to pop the rear hatch and the circular buttons that says hold that is going to be a remote start that is available for the sport trim level and up which also gets a push button start by the way so all I'm going to do is simply put my foot on the brake and press that bright red engine start button located just above the driver's right knee there and so but then once started up it is kind of a digital analog combination gauge setup all the way to your left you have your engine temp all the way to your right you have your fuel information in the center is going to be the digital portion of the gauges, which I do absolutely love. To control what is on that digital gauge setup, there are steering wheel mounted controls on the left side. Really gives you a ton of different information you can check out, including a digital speedometer, also boost pressure when you need your next oil change. There's Bluetooth information, radio information, the list goes on. Also, I don't know if you guys noticed when I was driving, the top portion of that digital gauge cluster actually changes color dependent upon how you are driving if you're driving more economic economical it's going to light up in green if you're driving a little less economical it's going to light up in a whiter color so that is pretty cool that that's there and Honda's done that for quite a while now so I do like that too but now making your way to overall interior quality a power moonroof is going to come with the EX trim level and the sport touring trim level so therefore we don't unfortunately have that today but sport pedals is going to come with the sport trim level that is what you guys are looking at right now I always like seeing that in cars it makes it feel like your car is faster than it really is I guess you could say. Dual zone climate control coming with the EX trim level and up. Auto dimming rear view mirror coming with the sport touring trim level. Home light controls once again for that sport touring trim level only. Just above the passenger side glove box you have a nice plastic design although it is a nice design I will say that it's kind of a texturized black finish there. You have some black stitching above that glove box as well. Perhaps one of my favorite parts about the Honda Civic is the little cubby area just underneath of the shifter here. It's essentially used to tuck all of those unnecessary wires out of the way so that when you hook your phone up to the Civic to charge it or to display Android Auto Apple CarPlay which I'll get to in a second the wires aren't going to be just in front of the shifter they're going to be underneath tucked away out of sight out of mind so I do like that as well we'll say that but having said that wouldn't have minded a wireless phone charger in this one, but nonetheless, definitely nice how they set that up there. Lecture mechanical parking brake is going to be located just behind the shifter, as well as dual cup holders. And 
Of course, you have a little bit of cubby space just underneath the center armrest as well. But so now let's make our way to the tech display on the Civic Hatchback. Five inch color LCD screen coming with the LX trim level only. Every other trim level is going to bump that up to a seven inch color touchscreen display. This is the one that you're gonna to wanna to get because you get Bluetooth audio streaming and Android Auto Apple CarPlay. That's the important one because that does not come on the LX trim level. And so with that, if you have a smartphone, simply hook it up to the Civic Hatchback. Therefore, you have free navigation displayed up on that text screen. So that is really the big benefit there. You can also like and dislike your Pandora songs. There's a couple other compatible apps as well factory navigation system is going to come with the sport touring trim level only although these days again you really don't need it as long as you have a smartphone you can also check out your radio information as expected up there as well and by the way the sound systems do differ quite substantially depending upon the trim level that you go with for example the lx trim gives you four speakers and 160 watts sport and ex trim levels like we have today give you eight speakers and 180 watts then lastly the sport touring is going to give you a 12 speaker sound system with 540 watts that is a substantial difference there and that one also comes with the subwoofer as well but having said that again we got the eight speaker sound system here today so what do you say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing this morning and let's test out the clarity of this one it's nothing really crazy it's definitely fine it's eight speakers so you got a decent amount of clarity because of that not the most bass in the world but if you guys do value music and that sound system go with the sport touring trim level that's the only way you're going to get it but last thing i wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display is when you do put this one in reverse of course you do have a rear view camera coming standard across the board letting you know who or what is behind you which is always is going to lead us into safety and so to start IIHS top safety pick when equipped with LED headlights. And that of course is just the sport touring trim level there. Front side, side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Rear child door locks back there, tire pressure monitoring system. It's all pretty basic stuff at this point, but of course you do have Honda sensing coming standard across the board as well. And so that is going to include a collision mitigation braking system, road departure mitigation system, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, forward collision warning, and lane departure warning as well. In addition to that, all trim levels also give you automatic high beams as well. That's a pretty cool feature. That means when you have your high beams on at night and a car starts to approach you in the opposite direction, the car is gonna automatically dim those high beams or put it back to normal. So you don't have to worry about going Going back and forth constantly and then it puts it back onto high beams again so it's a pretty cool feature it's a automatic thing there for you honda lane watch is going to come with the ex and the sport touring trim levels i think you guys probably know what that is already but so overall when it comes to my final thoughts here of the honda civic hatchback it is a top safety pick when equipped with the led headlights although a lot of vehicles these days are giving you led headlights coming standard even on the bottom trim level so wouldn't have minded some leds coming standard across the board nice driving dynamics i will say that though the handling is very nice in this one braking is excellent that's really something again honda always kills it compared to the competition the braking feel and the braking statistics from 60 is absolutely amazing so you gotta love that also wouldn't have minded a little better tech though as well like for instance a wireless phone charger would be nice a little bit larger screens at this point seven inch color touch screen display is kind of on the smaller side also a full digital gauge cluster would be nice perhaps on the sport touring trim level now that the 2021 elantra is coming out it's going to have those kind of things but overall i would say this one is a solid pick if you are into having fun on the back roads because it does have very good handling has a very good acceleration as well actually for its class and the Braking is definitely on point there as well. So that's my final thoughts. Let me know what you guys think of the Civic Hatchback in the comment section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media if you wanted to see which car is next coming to the channel. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know when I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.